Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Dr. Shilpi here and in this video today we'll be discussing about the emergency drugs used in dentistry. So we'll be discussing about the essential drugs, the supplemental drugs, their dosages, their indications and also we'll be talking briefly talking about a dental emergency kit. So firstly the emergency drugs that are used in dentistry, they have been broadly classified into essential drugs and supplemental drugs. So essential drugs are the drugs which we are expected to at least bare minimum that we need to keep them in clinic. The supplemental drugs are the add-on drugs. Those are pertaining to the emergencies that do not occur very frequently in the dental clinic. So let's start with the essential drugs so so first we have oxygen then aspirin then epinephrine nitroglycerin antihistamines then albuterol or, or salbutamol then what are the supplemental emergency drugs used in dentistry so that's glucagon atropine ephedrine hydroxycortisone morphine and nitrous oxide flumazenil lorazepam or midazolam then coming uh, to the dosages of the same. So oxygen, it can be used in any kind of medical emergency except hyperventilation because in hyperventilation, there is increased amount, already there is inc increased amount of oxygen in the body. So except hyperventilation, it can be used in all the other medical emergencies. Then coming to nitroglycerin, it is given uh, it's indicated for the pain of acute angina whenever there's myocardial infarction and nitroglycerin can be given as a sublingual spray or it can also be given as tablets. So 0.3 to 0.4 mg sublingual tablets which can be kept under the tongue can be given. Then coming to antihistamines. So they are basically given in when there is any kind, any mild kind of an uh, allergic reaction that occurs. So uh, it can either uh, diphenhydramine can be given or chlorpheniramine can be given. So dosages are diphenhydramine is 25 to 50 mg IV or IM or chlorpheniramine 10 to 20 mg IV or IM. To remember the dosages, I will give you a very small uh, clue for that. So diphenhydramine contains dye. There's a word of dye. So the dosage of diphenhydramine is almost double that of chlorpheniramine. Then coming to albuterol or salbutamol. So that is given in asthmatic bronchospasm. So two sprays, 180 to 200 microgram inhalation can be given. Then coming to aspirin. So that's indicated in myocardial infarction and 160 to 325 mg is the dosage. And it is available in the form of tablets. And the patient is made to chew the tablets and swallow the tablets. So aspirin basically inhibits platelet aggregation. Then coming to epinephrine. So epinephrine is indicated in anaphylaxis or it is indicated in asthma which is unresponsive to albuterol. So if you would have watched my class which is an asthma, I've already discussed this. So one is 2000 uh, uh, dilution, it should be given 0.3 to 0.5 mg. Uh, it can be given uh, uh, IM or it can be given 0.1 mg. Uh, IV initial dose can be given. It has to be remembered that once 2000 dilution should never be administered IV in such patients. Then it is also indicated in cases of cardiac arrest and then that those cases the uh, dosage is slightly more. It is 1 mg IV. Then coming to the supplemental drugs. So the first one in that is glucagon. So it can be given in unconscious hypoglycemic patients. So whenever there is a hypoglycemic patient, we can also uh, give, first we can give uh, any kind of orange juice or there can be glucose in the clinic. If not, then we can give, give 25, the patient doesn't respond to that, then we can give 25 to 30 ml of IV 50% dextrose can be given. If the patient, if an IV line, which is usually not available in the dental clinic, at that point of time, we can give glucagon. So that is given 1 mg IM or IV it can be given and usually it starts acting within 15 minutes after we 
actually deliver the drug then coming to atropine it is usually given in clinically significant bradycardia that is less than 60 beats per minute 0.5 mg im or iv can be administered then coming to ephedrine it is given in clinically significant hypotension when the blood pressure is less than 90 to 60 mm hg at that time it can be given at 5 mg iv in incremental dose then coming to lorazepam it is given usually indicated in status epilepticus so in cases of epilepsy whenever there's fit, fit status epilepticus 4 mg im or iv can be administered then coming to hydrocortisone it is usually indicated in adrenal insufficiency recurrent anaphylaxis and the dosage is 100 mg iv or im then morphine or nitrous oxide so it is usually indicated in, in angina-like pain, which is unresponsive to nitroglycerin or uh, nitroglycerin. So we can give, we have to titrate it and it can be given 2 mg IV or 5 mg IM. Then coming to naloxone, if, uh, it, it is usually indicated in the reversal of opioid overdose and it can be given at 0.1 mg IV or 0.4 mg IM can be given. Then coming to flumazenil, so it is uh, indicated when there is whenever there is uh, benzodiazepine overdose, whenever we are uh, 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 trying to give sedation or trying to do a surgery under uh, sedation, in those cases we, sh we should keep this drug handy in the clinic. So it is administered, it's given 0.1 mg IV, it can be given. Then ADA it indicates that um, it indicates American Dental Association it indicates that at least in the emergency kit there should be two injectable drugs which they suggest to be epinephrine or antihistamines and five non-injectable drugs that is oxygen, sugar, nitroglycerin, aspirin and bronchodilator should be present but I would recommend at least in this uh, in your dental clinic if not everything you should have at least epinephrine antihistamines, aspirin, salbutamol, nitroglycerin and lorazepam and midazolam can also be there because you can keep that drug because sometimes when the patient are too anxious they can present with hyperventilation uh, which is a medical emergency so we should try to keep even that for the management of anxious patients in the clinic. Then coming to the dental emergency kit you can see that there's a medical box which contains all the medicines that i mentioned and there's also a six liter oxygen can is there in which uh, there is an oxygen mask through which we can deliver oxygen to the patient then it also contains an ambu bag so ambu bag is a device which basically helps in performing rescue breathing during cpr and it has a mouthpiece and it is a balloon shaped bag and it has a point there's a pointed end over uh, which has to be placed over the victim no victim's nose and the rounded end has to be kept over the chin and it also contains a an oscimeter it also contains a glucometer it contains a stethoscope and it also contains uh, a bp apparatus so an emergency dental kit will usually have a booklet which will guide you for the use of these drugs. Then it will also have a checklist in which you can mark the expiry date of the medicines just to keep track of everything. And it will also provide you with a chart in which you will you can note down all the emergency contact numbers which might be needed during an emergency. So that is all about the emergency dental drugs and the emergency kit. You can customize the kit as per your requirement. So if you have any doubts or queries, you can leave a message in the comment section below. I'll definitely reply you back. And thank you so much for watching.